Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. Today's date, December the 29th, we're almost to the end of the year and into a new decade. Miss Vegas has a watch list that she wants to share with us today. Okay, good uh, day everyone. Hopefully having a nice weekend and some of you are on vacation, on vacation holidays. So happy holidays to everyone. Um, for those of you trading this week, I want to talk about MIK, FCEL, FPay, Tesla, PayPal, and Apple. So we're going to start with MIK, which is the Michaels company. And I've actually not really traded this stuff actually in the past. Uh, first time traded it the other day. And I like the fact that it was on a new uptrend and had a nice pocket pivot. And, you know, the stock kind of pulled back a little bit because um, it fell below the 50-day, but it had a nice run. And I think it's definitely one you should definitely keep watching. And uh, like I said, don't really know much about the company. Um, you know, it's obviously they're into the, you know, uh, arts and crafts. And, I mean, I've seen it. I'm not really a do-it-yourself home crafter, so I've never really even gone into Michael's store to buy any of the products, but you know what? A lot of people um, like Michael's to do home projects, and that's great for those of you that love decorating. Um, but you know what? MIK had an interesting run, and uh, nothing, like no real significant news. And uh, maybe, Jim, you could talk to us about the chart, because, you know, Michael's had a nice pop there, and I'd uh, like to hear what you think's coming up on this uh, trade. Oh, yes. Well, let's look at the year's chart at first here. And we'll just see where we are on the year. Pull that right down there. We've had a high of 1639, and she's pulled all the way back down to a bottom of right around 496. So my support's right around, probably around 503. And then she had a double top, kind of, well, more or less a bullish newer high that brought it up to right around the 1096 area and then she pulled back again for and then friday she had the big breakout and she closed at eight dollars so we're going to pull up a 20 day right now and actually i'm going to do a couple more things on here try to find a resistance level right there right around the 874 then we got another one right here at 840 so we're going to pull up a 20 day take a little look at it set nice little run it had and it continued most of the day even into close at 890 and I think it had such a great run that profit takers are coming in this is a 20 day one hour chart I'm seeing an ascending triangle forming right here let me see what this says off news first supports right around 754 resistance was around 882 so that's what I wrote down for my alert and we're going to pull up the daily one minute now and see just if I can find anything where I think a solid support might change. I'm going to still stick right around here, right around this 725. We did have an ascending triangle breakout right here and it caused it to move on up. It pulled back and hit this twice. So that's going to be the hard resistance we got to break. And it closed at, at 8 bucks and it pulled back to 775. So the hard resistance is going to be right here at 785. And the first support, well, the second support is going to be right down here at 725. If it decides to pull back, that might be the first little spot. Maybe the third one's going to be right here, right around the 709 area. I always look at these solid breakout stocks for pullbacks. And I also use this 200 day on a breakout stock for a support level, as you see what happened on Friday. It hit that 200 EMA on a daily one minute and bounced right off of it and continued to run most of the day, which was very impressive to me. And the pullback into close fell back to that triple bottom right there. And then you had the, the after hour sellers come in here and, and take profit. But it's still bullish to me. I think it can pull back to the 725 for your second support. And the resistance that we got to break is going to be right here at 8, 785 and bring it up to these other three resistances that you see on this chart. You're willing to start to chop, stop the chart at any time and draw these numbers down, copy and paste it. Just remember, it came from I Love Stocks. And the next one we're going to talk about is F-Cell. 
Yeah, I'm, be, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to mention I did, I was, you know, I was trying to research a little bit like what happened with MIK because, you know, the, the run happened on Friday and it was actually quite busy Friday. But uh, I guess the real reason why it had a bit of a volume surge was because um, they have a new CEO that's going to take over January the 6th and the fa uh, named Ashley Buchanan. And this person, um, Ashley, he came from Walmart. And when he worked at Walmart, he was the chief merchandising and COO for the Walmart US e-commerce. So because he's coming to take over as CEO in the new year, um, this is why the stock had a volume pop. Maybe the market liked his reputation and that he's gonna be the new man in charge at MIK. So just thought I'd just add that in and kind of explain That's very good. what happened. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. F sells okay. next. Next one, F sell. Well, F sell, interesting one here. Uh, definitely like this weekly chart. We have it in here. Mentioned it in our chat uh, that this is a very nice stock to swing trade. And you know, F sell had a lot of highs, also pre market um, on Friday. They also had the Tular project, which begins commercial operations. And, um, you know, if you recall back in December, even the week before, um, FSL also had some new highs and um, they also had uh, significant on-site progress with the U.S. Naval Submarine Base Project in Connecticut Green Bank providing also um, additional financing for this. So, you know, FSL's had a lot of different pieces of news coming out throughout the month of December. They had an 8K that was filed earlier in the month, and um, they wanted to have a shareholder meeting to approve the reverse stock split and also increase the authorized share count. So uh, f is looking pretty good for a swing trade continuation or day trade continuation if you're not in a swing trade. And I'll turn it over to Jim to talk about f -cell. Yeah, this one here is another one that's been kind of hopping here for the last month or so. It's been in the green. We did have a yearly high at 11.28, and it did pull back to 13 cents. So you know, it's it it it's been very bearish for a long period of time. But I think into 2020, this is one you want to keep on the radar. We're going to go to the 20-day chart. I always go to that after the yearly daily. My three moving averages right now I'm using are the 200 EMA, the 34, and the 9 EMA. For the last five days, six days, or at least last 15 days, it's generously respected the 9 EMA. Pulled back a couple times on the 20, on the 200. And then here in the last week, it's just had a surge up. So we are breaking out into an ascending triangle. It did kind of have a pullback here off that flag. But that was an, ex I mean, that flag ran for all the way from 113 to 160. So you're going to have profit takers on this trade. I like this trade right now. If the momentum keeps up, we're going to have a support level right here at 124. That's what we got to hold. If not, it'll pull back to around this 113 area or maybe back to the buck, a little bit 98 cents. So that's where we're going to put our low support at 98 cents. I'll mark that in a red line. That tells me that that was a very important place for a pullback. We did have a nice little breakout down here too at 84 cents, so keep that one in mind if it doesn't hold that 98. With resistance that we need to break, it's going to be 145, bring it back up to 160. And then we'll go on from there in the room. Always remember, you can keep these charts at any time. Just remember they came from I Love Stocks. I hate repeating myself, but we put a lot of work into this. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be FPay. Yeah, so you know what, FPay, I uh, really like this also for a swing trade. And uh, those of you know, we've talked about FPay earlier in the year. Uh, we haven't really talked about it um, lately, but, uh, oops, I dropped my microphone. Um, but I'll just continue right along here. So on FPay, uh, nice chart, nice setup here. No real news, honestly, on FPay at this time. Uh, they did have some insider purchases back in October. But you know what? The thing is that FPay, the reason it's moving, you know, it had a pocket pivot. It's had new 52-week highs. It's definitely got a lot of strength in the stock. 
So when you have a stock that's strong, new 52 week highs, I mean, it's only, you know, common that what's going to happen if you're in a swing trade, you can expect continuation, obviously the next day, sometimes uh, that doesn't always happen and you'll see a pullback and profit takers. But you know what, when there's a good 52 week high and a pocket pivot, um, which we've explained what pocket pivots are, you, those are kind of footprints getting ready for more highs. So definitely keep um, FPay on your watch list for tomorrow. If you're not in any day trades or swing trades, you may like to look at this one. So Jim, let's hear about some supports and resistances on FPay because it's had a beautiful run. Yep. We do have the 2018 trend lines on here and we did break out of that pattern. So I'm going to, and last year's were all blue. So I'm going to erase all these trend lines right now. And we're going to start out with a new color and I'll surprise everybody when we do the very first video on after the new year. So we've got a top that we broke out here right around the 209 area. That's going to be your low support at 209. Your next one's going to be right here right around the 219. And then we've got another one. You can see we've had three higher highs on the yearly chart. And that last one was right here at 236. And then I'm going to have a little support right here. I don't want to leave that 228 out. That's important. So we're going to go to the 20-day, and we'll see how these line up on the 20-day chart. I'm considering myself the, one of the best trend line drawers in the in the trade right now. I've been at it for about 15 years, and usually use it. Sometimes I've even gone back two years and used the same trend line that I had. Um, that period for the present. So we did have a nice little breakout all the way from this low support here at 228 and that's where I'm going to call the second support and maybe the third one's going to be right down here right around the 219 area. I'm going to draw that up in a red line because I don't want to forget that one. That's going to be a strong buy for me if it does pull back to that area. We are at a 52 week high and it did have a nice bounce after hours about six cents into close. We did close at 259 and we ran all the way up to around 268 after hours. Expect a little pullback maybe to the nine EMA on a daily one minute and we'll check that out here in a second. And I'm going to draw another trend line right here at 249 where we had that little triangle breakout right here. Had a look and had another one right here too so I'm going to put that one in there. So let's go to the daily one minute and see what it tells us. Things much pretty much line up. We did have a little higher high right here, adjusted right to that 200 EMA. I use this on breakout stocks for the pullback if the nine doesn't, if the nine fails. But we did have a big order right after hours. It ran all the way up here to 268. So first support is going to be right here at 258, and that second channel of trend line is going to be right down here between the 243 and the 249, and then you've got maybe. That low, low support is going to be at 219 if it decides to knife. But I'm going to be using this 200 EMA also as a support level when it comes Monday morning. So let me go over this again. Resistance to break is going to be the 268. And I usually go in about 25 cent intervals after it breaks $2. The first pullback support is going to be right here, right around the 249. That's going to be your first one. I think it can pull back to the 258 and bounce back up. And your third channel is going to be this 236 to 243. And then the next channel is going to be right down here, right around the 228 to 236. And then solid strong buy here at 219. If it dips down there, I'm in it. And that's going to be F pay. And the next one we're going to talk about is one that I got in Friday, and that's going to be Apple. Okay, well, you know what? Everyone that I know knows what apple is and uh, whether you own the product or not uh, apple is definitely a fantastic stock i stress this a lot that if you like to just hold long term in your portfolio you have extra money you want to have a stock that you don't have to worry about apple's one of those that i actually like remember i'm not licensed and i'm not an advisor i'm just giving you my personal opinion so obviously do your own due diligence and check with your licensed professional if you're going to invest money in apple but obviously in my personal thoughts you know apple um is just one of those companies that constantly has growth i mean they're always coming up with different products and subscriptions 
and they've had so many upgrades in the month of December. I mean, they had Renaissance give it a coverage to a target of 342. Citibank gave it an up to 300. Um, we had Wed Bush giving it a target of 325. And then um, Cohen gave it a target of 325 as well. And then I think, um, oh, by the way, Kramer loves uh, uh, Apple. And then Apple was upgraded to 350 by Wed Bush because they said, you know what? We changed our mind. We thought it was 325. We now say 350. And that was a comments that they said on December 23rd. So that's fresh information. Uh, the other thing too, you know, Apple is working on satellites and related wireless technology to actually find new ways to beam data like internet connectivity to their devices. And um, they're, you know, they're doing so many different things, but they've had an amazing, amazing year on Apple. It was a huge year for Apple. You know, remember that, um, you know, they also had that new uh, desktop, which is the long awaited Mac Pro and Pro Display XDR. Apparently they had some orders for it that started back on December 10th and actually a couple, quite a few customers got um, their orders early. They were told that they wouldn't get anything till January and some of them already got it. So I think those Apple's had a fantastic year, like month after month, there's just always doing something. And um, I think that there's a lot more to come in 2020 with Apple. And another thing too, on the actual chart, again, Apple made 52 week highs, the um, new highs expansion break, and it's just got so much strength on the stock. I mean, I actually can foresee that this can go to 295 to 297 in the coming trading sessions. And that's kind of where I see it going. And Jim, let's hear what you think because we had a strong close on Apple and uh, we're in the trade. And I had said, uh, when we talked about this trade in the, live in chat, and this is why we like having chat because we actually talk about the trades. It's not just giving ideas and then you're on your own left to think. Uh, you know, Apple had a bit of a pullback Friday and, um, you know, had a couple people saying, oh my, what am I going to do with my Apple? I'm in the Apple calls. And I said, listen, it's well, it has to hold 289. And it did at one point fall slightly below the 289, but then towards the close came right back super strong. And you know what? So long it's above this 289, I am bullish. If it goes below 287.50, then obviously I think it would look a bit, would be bearish at that point. Uh, but the money flows there and uh, definitely very pleased with the way it closed. And I think we're going to see some new highs next week, uh, this coming week. So, Jim, your thoughts on Apple? Yeah, if you're curious about what kind of chart I'm using, I'm using a TTM squeeze chart. And I want to give kudos out to one of our traders. I think it's probably been one of the most improved traders of the year. And her name is Undollar. I call her Undelay. But she's really kind of brought... Um, a new spark to the TTM trend in our room and I just want to give you kudos again and thank you very much but uh, this is a yearly chart you can see on the TTM trend that it's mostly been green with maybe just a couple of times where it pulled back and just so many green candles on this trade all the way down from 142 all the way up to 293 high that we had on Friday the bears did try to come in on Friday and they got they had their way for a little bit, and I'm going to pull up the 20-day just to have a look at the 20-day. I always like to do that to find me a support level. We did have a five-day channel right here between 279 and 281.91. Miss Vegas and I have been bullish on this for the whole year. I called the market back, and we both did kind of. We both called the market back at the end of last year, said we were going to have a bullish run on stocks because we had such a negative year in 2018 and that's been nothing but bullish and I'm going to come out and say today that for the new year coming up I'm going to be bullish on it too I think the the way that the economy's going the 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 low job rate is just spectacular been one of the best economies I've seen in my lifetime so we do have a resistance that we need to break and that's going to be at the 29162 area I want to see this run back up and break that resistance next week, come Monday, and get up to the high of 293. Now, I'm going to pull this up to a daily one minute 
well, I got to put on a different thing here. Right there at that 297. We'll just put it right there. There you go. I'm going to call a support level right down here at 285.05. That's going to be your strong support level. If it decides to pull back, I don't think it's going to. But there are going to be bears looking at it. Some of these bears think the market's a little overextended. I've had a few conversations with a few of them. But I'm just going to keep my bullish trend going up on most of the socks that I watch. And we're going to pull this down to the daily one minute. You see, we did have a nice little pullback on it right after that big run on that open. She did pull back and retrace back up here past this resistance level. And then we had another bear run, pulled back to 288.12, and then we got back in it. That's when I got back in the trade and ran it on up. And then it pulled back right into ours. Then the bears, the bulls came in and run it back up to that 200. So I want to see this run back up. I'm going to draw me a little resistance level that we need to break, and that's going to be this 290.39 area. Pullback support could be, we did have lower. This is something that I like seeing in a chart is a lower high. So I'm going to draw me a little trend line right there from that 288.12 all the way back up to here. When I see a lower high like that, that means the bulls are still in charge and that it could have another breakout up to resistance level of the 291.62. If it does break that, we do got to break the 290.39. Don't take me wrong. That's very important. Then you'll have another one right here right around the 291. 10 area. I got to draw that trend line here. I hate doing that because it gets some kind of 291.10. I spotted that right there. So that's going to be your next resistance and then the hard resistance that we got to break for the day is going to be at 291.62 to bring it up to the next resistance levels. But pullback support 288.64 at the most it might go up to a higher low and that's going to be right here at the 289.08. If that holds, we're going to break this resistance of 290.39. Every chart tells a story. And always remember the top three patterns that I like is the ascending pattern, the descending pattern, the pennant flag, and the symmetrical flag. Those are my four favorites. But my top two favorites on a bull is the ascending and the pennant flag. So that's Apple, and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Tesla. Oh, my gosh. You know what? Tesla is definitely in the cards for me for 2020. And I know, actually, one of the ladies in our room, Trader Doe, she ordered the Tesla truck. So congratulations to her. And uh, you know what? We have uh, earnings for Tesla coming out in January, January 22nd. So stay tuned on that information. But let me tell you about Tesla. I mean, you guys know, especially even if you're not trading the stock, we've been trading this options like crazy and people making so much money on these Tesla calls. And, um, you know, Tesla's going to deliver the first Model 3 cars made in China. And uh, there's going to be a lot of news, uh, you know, maybe potentially tomorrow. And uh, they're going to showcase, um, the, I guess that's, being released tomorrow the parking lot is full of cars uh you know tesla first of all has as you know 52 week highs it had an outside day as well and you know tesla has so much going on right now um they have a lot of things coming in 2020 first of all you know they had a huge increase in production they also had several new product launches and they're also going to be marketing some of those products okay they have the Tesla Model Y. They also have the Tesla Model S. They also have the Tesla Semi, which I was looking at um, because I wanted to see what those look like and what an interesting look, these semi trucks. And they've been working also with an electric truck production that's going to actually some battery company that they won't say who they're working with, but they said that this battery will last for 1 million miles. So stay tuned to hear about this apparently new Tesla battery that's going to be coming up in 2020. That's going to be huge news when this comes out um, because this is going to be at a event that's going to be called the Battery and Powertrain Investors Day event. We don't know the date when that's happening, but that's happening in 2020. Also, 
Tesla apparently might be working on an app store. Um, they haven't announced anything regarding that, but they did mention, it was mentioned in an article with Electric, that um, they plan to maybe have some sort of games and platforms for as the fleet grows. Um, they're going to have probably some games that you can subscribe to. So this is just amazing. Just Tesla just doesn't stop. And you know what? I want to mention, they have also a lot of shorts, okay, shorting the stock. And they don't have a lot of uh, days to cover. They've only got 2.9 days left to cover. The short, the stock is shorted 20% of the float. That's a lot of shorts in there still. And thanks to those shorts, by the way, that make the stock have new highs. Because the more you short, the more you got to cover. Every time there's news, the stock takes a nice run. And Jim, let's hear about Tesla because you've been fighting a lot of bears on this. Oh, many bears, many bears. And I finally convinced them when we were down here at 240, 250. They were shocked. I got many messages saying you finally won the won the fight. But we did have a descending pattern on Tesla Friday. It did have lower highs. And it kind of found support right here, right around the 229.54 area. And then after hours, it had that pop. We would also had the 9 and the 34 cross over the 200 on the daily one minute. But I want to take a look at this yearly chart for starts. That When that earnings came out, thing just popped up, and it's been almost bullish ever since. Our green candle, we had maybe a week and a half where, where it failed because of the, the breakout of the the windows and the cyber truck kind of put a little downfall on it but it didn't last very long and then now, now this news remember what happened to costco when uh china when they opened that store up in china that stock just ran tremendously that day they even had to close the store down early they're probably going to have the same kind of rate of people when they open up this s model s uh in china tomorrow so i think it's going to go ahead and run on up i think the momentum is definitely behind the stock right now, and the bears are going to try to short it, but they're going to get in and out of it. They're not going to be, it's not going to be a long, probably put plays. They're not going to be holding it for too long. They're going to take their money and run, allowing the bulls to come back in the trade. So let's look here at the 20 day. You can look at the 20 day run all the way from this 327. Yes, we called it out in the room. She ran all the way up. And had kind of a, uh, a resistance channel right here at 432.96. So we're going to pull up the daily now. That 432.96 is very important to break. We're going to pull up the, the five day, five minute. I'm going to see what I wrote on here. This is, yeah, this is when I said that it had to hold pre market because I was kind of concerned about the lower highs that came in pre market. And then you had that hard sell off where the bears came in and found support right here right around the 427 and it did bounce up and hit that resistance line that I did call from that previous high that we had the day before at 432.96 so that's still and then we touched it right here see so that's going to be your hard resistance if we can break that 432.96 we're going to go up to newer highs and the resistance that we're going to have to break I'm going to adjust this 437.18 down to 436.28 Remember that 436.28 is going to be your hard resistance to break. If we break past that, we're going to go into new highs, and we could see 450 by the end of the week if the bulls still carry its load. And I think they can because they've been letting. Now, this is one that you want to watch. I want to pay. I want you to pay very close attention to this. Right when it has the good run pre-market, it pulls back. The bears are trying to get in here and pull it down a little bit but it doesn't last. It's happened four or five times here in the last week. They had that little breakout, the bears tried to pull it down. You had that breakout, the bears tried to pull it down. You had the breakout with higher highs, the bears tried to pull it down. So I did the same thing with Roku. I started noticing this pattern. That means that the bears are trying to short it, but they're not going to get in there and do it. They're going to bring it down, and if you see the, the spread starting to widen, 30 40 cents that means they're you're going to be fighting the bears all day long but we're going to be bullish on this just due to the news come monday and what resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be that 432.96 up to that new resistance of 436.28 and i think that's it for the aftermarket report 
And we have PayPal. Oh, PayPal. I forgot to write it down. Yeah. PayPal's next. Last but not least, I just want to talk about PayPal. And, you know, I like PayPal because they actually recently had some news. And, uh, you know, I like the payment sector, you know, Visa, MasterCard, um, American Express. They've all had some nice runs. And specifically, though, PayPal, you know, they had their partnership that they've recently finished. And I um, just want to pull up the details here on this partnership where they actually closed on GoPay acquisition and they're entering China. So, you know, PayPal's definitely eyeing the growth and they're eyeing new markets. Um, this news came out on December 19 that they finally did close the deal to buy a majority equity stake in China's company called GoPay. And the official name of this actual company is called Gufuabo Information Technology. And they did mention this deal back in September, but they finally did close the deal. So this follows, you know, the fact that um, they are getting another company coming into China. If you guys remember, I mentioned earlier, you know, American Express, MasterCard, Visa, but American Express also had gained permission to bring their credit card products clearing to China. So they're, they finally got to bring, sorry, they're clearing services over to China. So, you know, the fact that now PayPal's in there, um, that's fantastic. The transaction's now closed and um, they brought, they bought 70% of the company. So PayPal is the majority shareholder of China's GoPay. And what's going to happen is with this partnership, it's going to allow PayPal to also become a stronger partner to Chinese financial institutions and also to other technology platforms. And it's going to help them expand their partnership, for example, with the China Union Pay and AliExpress. And like I said, it's going to help them forge new partnerships in the financial industry and also with consumers globally. So I think this is a fantastic deal that they've done. Uh, you know, China is so strong. I mean, they have roughly 500 million online shoppers and it's going to apparently drive like $2 trillion in online sales this year, which is more than 50% of the global online retail. So can you imagine how much money PayPal is going to make on this transaction? I mean, this is just insanity. So definitely PayPal, uh, definitely trading this from an options perspective. Um, you can look to trade it also on the stock, but definitely PayPal is one you should be looking at. And uh, the ones I have here for PayPal um, definitely have quite a few, uh, but specifically January 115 calls and uh, those expired January 17. And then we also have 109 calls that expire this coming week. So we have a few different ones with different strikes and different expiry dates because we're just kind of rolling some of these up. But definitely, um, you know what? Fabulous. And uh, keep PayPal on your watch. And Jim, let's hear about PayPal before we wrap up Sunday's edition. Remember, part of the mafia of the PayPal was Elon Musk. So this is what gave him the fortitude to become probably one of the best inventors in the, in the world in my time, in my lifetime. So we're going to pull up the uh, PayPal chart, pull up the yearly. We did have a yearly high up right here. We do have some retracement that going on. I see a couple of good things on this chart right now. I do see a 121.48 high. I do see that we broke out of an ascending triangle. And I'm going to draw that in right here on a, on a daily basis. I'm right about here all the way up to here. So we got a little ascending triangle breakout that we had. And that happened here in the last couple of weeks. So we're off to new highs. And the new high is going to be the new target on PayPal is going to be right here. Let's change this back to the dollar sign. Right about there. At 111.63, that's going to be the resistance that we want to get to by the end of, well, soon in a way. I can't determine when. And then we got another one right here at 110.19. So that's the hard resistance that we got to break. Pullback support is going to be right around in here. And I'm going to adjust that to right about. I'm adjusting it from these candles right in here. 
kind of line up with that one right there right around 108.82 that's going to be your support level let's bring this up to a 20 day that's going to be the top of that resistance line on that ascending triangle remember that's one of my favorite patterns I like to look for so we have a low support right down here at 200 at right around the 107.61 area and it could be in this little gap right here so I'm going to draw that in and shadow that in That's going to be a hard support area for me to get in. That's going to be my low support. The second one's going to be that trend line, and that's going to be right here at 108.25. I'm going to bring that up. That first support's going to be right down here at 108. Well, yeah, I got it in there. No, I didn't either. Bam. That 108.82 is going to be your, your probably your first support. If it does pull back any but we do have uh, what I would call a red day on Friday where it had higher lows but and it had lower highs and it created a flag and this flag could be could be bullish or bearish but I'm gonna go with a bear a bull on it I want to break the resistance at 112.19 first resistance is going to be right there at 109.71 and that little pivot point is going to be at 109.34 so the resistance that we got to break is going to be 109.71 and if we can do that we'll bring it up to new highs of the 110.19 and I want you to look at this yearly chart one more time. We have a lot more room to climb on this stock and we do can pull back to that ascending triangle support that we had right here at the 108 area and that's PayPal and that's it for the market report. I can say it now. Just always remember. All right. Always remember to hit this little Twitter bird right over here on our website. Follow us on stock on uh, Twitter. We're up to 897 followers now. We keep growing day by day. We also have a little place on here on our website where you can follow us on stock twits, Pinterest, and our YouTube channel link. And we also have a, a week's trial here on our that you can check out join sign up through the website and you can follow us on our discord channel and miss vegas well i just want to wish everyone a great holiday season and uh definitely we'll be working on a lot of new content a lot of um, educational content i have received so many requests from people that want to see more educational content as well from the watch list videos that we do produce so i'm definitely committed to doing that for 2020 I'm excited to add another part two video coming up on Chatterflow. I'll be probably releasing that later today, so stay tuned on that. And please subscribe and smash the like button because we love hearing from you. We love your follows and love your feedback. Whether it's good or bad, we'll listen to what you have to say. Thank you, everyone. Have an amazing holiday season. If you're in taking the week off, we'll see you in 2020. If not, come by and visit us. Love to meet you. Jim and I love helping people. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode of the I Love Stocks Market Report. This is the end of the Market Report. Today's date, 12-29-2019. And the next one, we might do it. We'll be doing another video tomorrow maybe. But always remember, we got a new decade coming and a bunch of surprises. I Love Stocks. Thank you.